They go by many names, vents, registers, diffusers, grills. An important part of any HVAC system is how the conditioned air is being distributed to each room. By a process called manual T, HVAC designers decide where to place supply and return grills in a home and what size they should be. Let's look at an example room. The first thing we want to figure out when deciding where to place grills is where is the majority of the load for that room coming from. In cooling mode, we refer to this as the hot wall. This is going to be any exterior walls and especially walls with windows as that is where the most heat transfer is going to be happening. We're not really concerned with walls that are adjacent to other conditioned rooms since there's no load coming from there. Once we've identified where our hot wall or walls are, we know that that is where we want our air to be blowing towards. To do that, we place the grills along the interior wall opposite from the hot wall. The air comes out of the supply grill is directed along the ceiling towards the exterior wall, then goes down the wall, mixing with the warm air, cooling it down. Then eventually it makes its way back to the return. Supply grills have a few metrics to their performance, spread and throw. The spread is the horizontal angle at which the air comes out of the grill. The throw is the distance the air will travel away from the grill. Most manufacturers will provide this information since it's important for choosing the correct size grill. Let's look at an example. Here is a snapshot from performance data for a Titus grill. On the left side, we can see the grill sizes. At the top, we have the velocity of the air coming out of the grill at the face. For each grill, there is a column for CFM, and there's a row for each of the possible direction configurations for that grill whether it only has louvers to throw air in one direction, all the way up to if it's able to throw air in all four directions. There's also a thick black line that denotes NC20. This stands for noise criteria, and NC20 is the noise level that we want to stay below for residential applications. So we select data from the left of this line. And lastly, we can see for each grill size and direction, some different values for the throw. The three values show the distance at which the air is traveling a certain velocity. As the air moves further away from the grill and mixes with the room air, it slows down until eventually it doesn't have enough forward velocity to keep moving forward and instead begins to fall. So for Titus, the three velocities that the throw is given for are 150 feet per minute, 100 feet per minute, and 50 feet per minute, or terminal velocity. This is the point at which the air won't really move forward anymore and will begin to fall. So this third throw value is the one we care about the most. That is the one we want to match the distance from our grill to our hot wall. All of this information so far has been for supply grills, but what about the returns? To decide where to place a return grill in a room, we want to look for what's called a dead zone, or an area where air in the room is not really circulating as much. We also want to stay away from exterior walls as we don't want to bring hot air back to the air handler. Although it seems like that might make sense, it would actually cause the unit to work a lot harder to cool down the air, making it less efficient. We also don't want the return too close to the supply grills because then the cold supply air would just get sucked back into the return and wouldn't have a chance to mix with the room air. So for this example room from before, a good location for the return grill would be someplace like here, tucked in the alcove where the door is. One thing to note, per most codes, all grills, supply or return, need to be at least three feet away from smoke detectors, which is sometimes a conflict near the door. So just something to keep in mind. To determine what size our return grill needs to be, we first have to mention what face velocity we want for the return, which is the velocity of the air at the face of the grill. In order to keep noise levels low, we'd like to use a face velocity for the return of 300 feet per minute. This is so homeowners don't hear the air rushing into the grill. Keeping a lower velocity also helps keep the pressure down on the return side of the system. Using this, we have the equation 
free area is equal to the CFM divided by the 300 feet per minute times 144, where the free area is the area of the grill that the air is actually able to pass through, not that's blocked by louvers or the edges. And the 144 is so we can convert our answer from square feet to square inches. This is helpful since grill dimensions are given in inches typically. Then to find the actual nominal grill area, we can take the free area we just calculated and divide it by the correction factor or free area percentage, which just means the percentage of the total grill area that is free area. This is usually provided by the manufacturer for their specific grills. Then all you have to do is find a length and width for the grill that will give you the total area you need. There are a lot more details that we could go into, but that covers the basics of an introduction to manual T. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified anytime we upload a new video. And visit us at www.procalx.net for any HVAC design needs. Thanks for watching.